Performance USA, the greatest entertainers in America, as requested by you, the men and women in the United States Armed Forces throughout the world. Command Performance presented this week and every week till you're home from the hospitals and back from over there. Hi, gang, this is Frank Bingman tearing off the top of another Command Performance. Half an hour of the best for the best. That's you. Loaded according to your letters to command. Care of Armed Forces Radio, Los Angeles, USA. Well, you guys and gals really know how to pick them, for your hostess tonight is really a pip. It's the beautiful, talented Decca record star, the star of Radio's Club 15, Evelyn Knight. Hi, everybody. Glad to be back once more. And right off the bat, I'd like to answer those requests from Glad Sack Jolly, Gruesome Bakewell, and the rest of the listeners to WVTR Tokyo with a little item labeled the Turionis Bonnet. McTavish was pipe major in the Highland Scots Brigade And proudly led his regiment when it was on parade He loved a Highland lassie and before he went away She sewed a little keepsake on the top of his beret T'was the toory on his bonnet, the red toory on it His red toory oory oory he left his kilt and spore and off he went to war in his red toorie And when swinging into action, he's the center of attraction, the pride of bunny Scotland, so they say. T'was not the moon or stars are the way he rolled his arms, t'was the toorie on his bonnet, the red toorie on it, his red toorie When he came home on furlough to his wee bit button bend, he met his bonny Jean and went roaming down the glen. She said to him, McTavish, man, if you are true to me, give me your old Glengarry, for there's one thing I must see. Was the Turi on his bonnet, the red Turi on it, his red Turi Uri Uri A. He left his kilt and four and off he went to war in his red toorie And when swinging into action, he's the center of attraction, the pride of bunny Scotland, so they say. T'was not the moon or stars, or the way he rolled his eyes, t'was the toorie on his bonnet, the bonnet toorie on it, his red toorie his red. Thank you very much. Ah, uh, marvelous, Evelyn. And uh, now, what's the first command performance business on hand? Gang, here's a new face on your show the country's newest sensation, Vic Damone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, Evie. Glad to see you, Vic. Say, you know, you're an awfully popular guy. Uh, they tell me your records are selling like hotcakes. Uh, I know. I wish they'd sell like records. <laughs> <laughs> How's about giving us a sample of that liquid uh, larynx? larynx? Well, well, I'll tell you, Evie. We, we've got a song we'd like to do. Uh, we do hope you like it. It's written by a very great team. Jerome Kern and Oscar Hammerstein. The song, Why Was I Born? Wonderful. And we hope you like it. <laughs> Why am I living? 
What do I get? What am I giving? Why do I want to think I daren't hope for? What can I hope for? I wish I knew. Why do I cry? You never hear me. I'm a poor fool. But what can I do? Seven of which is tonsil. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, enough about me. What's next on the show? Huh? Well, Victor, this week we thought of how to kill umpteen thousand requests with exactly one routine. The gang keeps asking for dozens of movie stars we couldn't possibly crowd into, into just one show. And now we're going to hear all those artists thanks to just one man. One man? And uh, how is that <laughs> possible? <laughs> well... We latched onto a lad that even our furthest listeners have been hearing good things about. He's becoming the king of the smart supper club comics. I mean, of course, Arthur Blake. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Right away, I gotta explain this 12 feet of hair hanging down my spine. <laughs> I need it in my impressions. You know, Evelyn, I do Ronald Coleman, Spencer Tracy, Lionel Barrymore, Clark uh, Gable. Wait, uh, excuse me, Arthur, but uh, those guys all have close haircuts, so uh, what are you doing with all the hair, huh? Stuff it in my ears. I can't stand impersonation. <laughs> <laughs> all right, okay. But on to business, Arthur. Suppose we fill those thousands of orders by presenting a digest version of Command Performance with all eight million guest stars provided by one Arthur Blake. Command Performance USA, the greatest entertainers in America, is requested by you, the men and women in the United States Armed Forces throughout the world. Your host tonight is Arthur Blake. Yes, and here's our first guest, one of the top hits on your hit parade, Jimmy Stewart. Well, I uh, really shouldn't be on this command performance. You see, the, the Marine who wrote Asking Me is now an enemy of mine. I <laughs> made a foe out of him. Won all his money in a crap game. That's what you call making a foe the hard way. Yeah. <laughs> well, gosh, all jelly beans, look who's coming in now, Catherine Hepburn. Hello, Jimmy, darling. Is that really you? Really? <laughs> really? Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> really, really? Yeah, yeah. Really, really, really? Yeah, yeah. I never heard such a dull conversation. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, Katie, I don't have any calla lilies for you. Oh, I'm so tired of those beastly calla lilies. I'm sick and tired of walking around with calla lilies. That's why I'm so glad to see these servicemen. I'd much rather be roaming in the gloaming with a yeoman. <laughs> <laughs> well, I must be going now, really, I must. 
Uh, so long, Katie. Uh, well, well, look who's over there now. Say, isn't that uh, Filmland's greatest gossip reporter, uh, Hedda Hopper? Thank you and hello, everybody. This is Hedda Hopper bringing you the lowdown on the higher ups in Hollywood. I attended newcomer Arthur Blake's debut last night. The place was packed to the doors. What celebrities? Everybody who came or who could come stayed away. <laughs> the line of people waiting at the door reached way down the street, two blocks north, clear to the Paramount Theater. Come to think of it, that's the way they were facing. <laughs> but anyway, friends, more power to Arthur Blake, a talented young man who rose from nothing to a state of extreme poverty. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, now, gang, here's Filmland's greatest gossip reporter, Luella Parsons. Thank you, and hello to all of you from <laughs> My first exclusive. <laughs> Here is a scoop. <laughs> Artie Shaw has just eloped with Phil Spitalny's orchestra. <laughs> I think I'll get up on my Woodbury soapbox. <laughs> oh, my. Well, look who's under the table, Hedda Hopper. Lolly, darling, I do love that polka dot dress you're wearing. Thank you, Hedda, but I'm not wearing a polka dot dress. <laughs> this is a strapless evening gown. Wonderful, darling. How did you ever get those warts lined up like that? <laughs> Say the sweetest things, head and dear. <laughs> Would you like to go out to my car and breathe the exhaust pipe for a while? <laughs> Lolly, darling, tell me, did your parents have any other children, or is it still one zombie to a customer? <laughs> oh, no, wait a minute, girls. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You gotta break this up because here comes Peter Lorry. Look who else is dropping in to be on command performance. Benty Davis. Pita, pita, pita. <laughs> tarling, tarling, tarling. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> I'm very nervous. How are you? Peter, darling, I have a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a light. <laughs> Would you give me a light? <laughs> My cigarette. Gladly, Miss Davis. Would you mind holding your hand still? I can't light your cigarette if you keep making circles with your hands. Just a habit, darling. But who else do you know that can talk to you and wipe your windshield at the same time? <laughs> it's a nervous habit. I get so nervous, I'm ready to pop. <laughs> Don't even wait until I'm ready. <laughs> oh, look. I can't stand Edward G. Robinson, and here he comes now. Yes. Edward G. Robinson, that's me, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm a pretty tough guy, see? Yes, pretty tough. In that tough neighborhood I grew up in, a guy had to be tough. Had to live by your fists. Always by your fists. Why, I was 12 years old before I knew I had fingers. <laughs> Edward, you're pretty good with a gun, too. Yeah, I can shoot faster than anybody alive, see? Nobody can shoot faster than me. That's why they call me, get the let out, Robinson, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, now to put a fitting climax to this star-studded command performance, I uh, want you to all listen to Miss Dorothy Lamour. Dottie, the stage is all yours. Strange enchantment fills the air. Just a sound that comes from anywhere.
You're really a talented 27,000 guys. Comes now another talented group of people. Well, now, thank you kindly, partner. Bust my cayuse, but I'm sure proud to meet up with a filly like you. Oh, Arthur Blake, I didn't know you did a Western, too. Oh, shucks, I'm not Arthur Blake. I'm just letting my hair grow for a Western moving picture. <laughs> Golly, gang, then I guess this isn't an imitation. It's really Lloyd Perriman and all the rest of the Sons of the Pioneers. Well, thank you very much. Lloyd, are you really a son of a pioneer? Why, yes, ma'am. Why, why, Evie, my great-grandfather was the first man to bring a horse from Kentucky to Texas. No kidding. You bet he did. And Kentucky made him bring it back, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we better get on to some music. What, uh, what have you boys cooked up for us? It's a new tune that I think has a great future. It's called The Lucky Old Son. in the morning out on the job work like the devil for my pay while that lucky old son has nothing to do but roll around heaven all day I slept my woman toil for my kids sweat till I'm wrinkled and gray but that lucky old son has nothing to do but roll around heaven all day. Good Lord above, can't you know I'm climbing? Tears all in my eyes. Send down that cloud with a silver lining. Let me. Paradise, show me that river, take me across, wash all my troubles away, like that lucky old son, give me nothing to do, but Yes, Evie. Vic, I understand there's a, a special command we've been ordered to perform. Mm -hmm, that's right. It's from Sergeant Frank Johnson. And he's sick and tired of those gay, happy radio programs where everybody owes a man's common, gay, and philosophical shows like uh, uh, One Man's Family. Oh, yeah. yeah. The roof can fall in, the dam can bust, the children can starve to death, yet through it all they remain calm and happy. Well, Sergeant... We're prepared to try and kill off such programs with a special drama about a typical, perpetually happy family, the Drool Joys. Tonight, we present chapter 312 of book 27,983 <laughs> of our story of the philosophical Drool Joy family. This chapter is entitled Shirley Temple or John's Other Wife. Good evening, folks. Mother Grubnick's Bird Gravel Company, makers of Mother Grubnick's pedigreed bird gravel, brings you the family all America adores, the Drool Joys. Yes, the Drool Joys, the sweetest, nicest, homiest, philosophicalest, lovingest, sugariest, darlingest, most nauseating family in America. <laughs> But before we put on our rubber gloves and pick up the drool joys where we left them yesterday, a word from our sponsor. As you know, our catchy slogan used to be Mother Grubnick's bird gravel is the only bird gravel that contains <clears throat> gravel. 
Well, the other day we had an explosion in the factory, and now our new motto is Mother Grubnik is the only bird gravel that contains <clears throat> Mother Grubnik. <laughs> And now for the Drool Joys. Remember yesterday when we left the Drool Joys, Victor was about to hit his wife, Portia, with a coal shovel. Did he hit her? Yes, he did. <laughs> but it was just a lover's quarrel. It might have happened in any American family that had a coal shovel. <laughs> As we join them today, we find father and mother Drool Joy sitting in the parlor reading. Let's listen. Oh, Victor, darling, there's a precious frown on your precious philosophical brow. What's wrong, precious? Well, I'm a bit worried about little Herman. Don't you think precious little Herman is too skinny? Skinny? Why, Angel? Why, this morning he pulled the stopper out of the bathtub and he slipped down the drain. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that precious of him? <laughs> Remind me to go down to El Segundo Wednesday. Look for him. He should be coming through by then. <laughs> oh, in this wonderful world, nothing ever goes wrong. Of course, nothing ever goes wrong because in this world, good people are good people and bad people are bad people and the bad people are never bad and the good people are always good. Now, there's a great hunk of philosophy. <laughs> Thank you. That's by Edgar A. Guest. Edgar A. Guest, the poet? No, Edgar, a guest at the Bide a Wee Sanitarium. <laughs> well, Portia, I tell you, let's turn on the radio and get some joyous news of the happy outside world. Flash, it has just been learned today that 60 million people starved to death in Siberia. Say, did you hear that, Precious? 60 million people starved to death. Yes, Precious, and I'll bet they took it seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Another flash. Today, 49,000 people were run over by steamrollers. Oh, 49,000 people run over by steamrollers. <laughs> Isn't that precious? <laughs> Another flash. Two million people drowned by a flood. <laughs> Two million people. Wow. Isn't that precious, uh, precious? Yes. One final bulletin. Mother Grubnicks has decided to drop their daytime program about the happiness family, the Drool Joys. What? what? Portia, this is serious. I'll tune in the great analyst. Great and. <laughs> Great news anal analyst. <laughs> we know what you mean. Yeah, great news anal analyst. <laughs> right? <laughs> somebody, well, somebody who keeps up with the important developments and news. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I know who you mean, Victor. <laughs> I know who you mean. Don't tune her in. I couldn't stand her at a time like this. But this is her station. Hello to all of you from Hollywood. <laughs> My first exclusive. Here is a scoop. <laughs> Artie, Artie Shaw has just eloped with the entire student body of Vassar College. <laughs> Now for the mail, dear R.G. I'm sorry, but Lana Flapsladdle's telephone number is a military secret, known only to the members of the United States Army and Navy. <laughs> you better take care of that last important matter. One more, I don't know. Portia, Portia, this must be the this must be the bulletin about whether Mother Grubnik keeps us on the air or not. Fr friends, I have something very important to take care of. I oh, oh you cats! Now she's lost her place. <laughs> oh, I'm Gosh. gonna turn that darn thing off. No, don't, don't turn it off. Why you, Victor? You're not mad because I turned off the radio, are you? You still love me, don't you? Why, of course, honey, love. Her announcement might only mean the difference between life and death. <laughs> A slap happy broad. All right, lover of my life. I'll bet he'd give a million dollars to get a divorce from her. Are you comfortable, huh? Well, I'd give a million dollars to get a divorce from her. I could get one, too, on the strength of her diary. If I only knew where she hides her diary. Completely comfortable, Victor, darling. I bet he'd love to know where I hide my diary. Oh, swell. <laughs> I wonder where she hides it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Little does he know it's right under the cushion of this love seat. Where? Under the love seat. <laughs> Uh -huh. 
I thought so. I thought so, you faithless hussy. This is all the evidence I need. Take that. Victor, you shot me. Now that you're shut up, I can finally turn on the radio and hear what Luella was trying to say. Mm. <laughs> are you sure this is it? Marvin, are you positive? Oh, Come on, Luella, this <laughs> may be life or death. Uh, let me fret, Marvin, are you sure this is it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, little mind, boy. <laughs> oh. oh, good night to you from Hollywood. <laughs> Thanks, Arthur Blake. Say, Evie, I understand you and Vic Damone have cooked up a really great closer for the show. A duet, is that right, Vic? Mm-hmm, yep, and it's, it's something we hope those customers around Okinawa will like. Exactly like you. Oh, I know why I've waited, know why I've been blue. Prayed each night for someone exactly like you. Why should we spend money on a show or two When no one does those love scenes exactly like you You make me feel so grand, the one and the world to you You seem to understand each foolish little scheme I'm scheming, dream I'm dreaming Now I know my mom taught me to be true Yes, she met me for someone exactly like you. You make me feel so grand. What the world do you? You seem to understand each foolish little dream I'm scheming, dream I'm dreaming. Now right to the exits of another command performance. As always, you have our thanks for asking us in. And now, Evie, shall we say goodnight to the people? Right. Vic Damone, why don't you tee us off? Okay. Good night, gang. Frank Bingman. Good night, guys and gals. Sons of the Pioneers. Good night. And Arthur Blake. Good night to all of you from Hollywood. <laughs> This program was arranged with the aid of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education. <laughs> <laughs>